of a little bit more difficult division. We are looking at division and dividing by <coughs> multiples of 10. Now what, pray tell, would be a multiple of 10? Remember back in the days we've talked about multiples before. What are multiples, Maggie? Nervous they are. Yeah, basically counting by tens. Anything that you get when you count by tens, and they will only do 10 for now, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60, 70, 80, and 90. I don't think they'll do, they won't do 100, and they won't do 110. I think it's just a double digit thing there. Now, the deal with this is it's just as easy to divide by a multiple of 10 as it is to multiply by a number that isn't a multiple of 10. For example, if I gave you this problem here, uh, let me find it here, 3 into 75. We have our little division algorithm, which is what? What is our algorithm for division, our way of doing division? Usually we follow a set little pattern, Ryan, that is? And bring down. Yeah, you follow that little pattern, just go walk through those steps there. And when you did this one here, okay, it was, how many times does 3 go into 7? Two times, that's the division part. Two times three, that's the multiplication part. The subtraction part, the little arrow with the bringing down part. And then how many times does three go into 15? Okay, so my answer is 25. Well, let's change that and let's make this three instead of that, make it a multiple of 10. Okay, how does that change things? Well, it doesn't, except for this fact right here, that when I, I can't, and here's what you have to be careful with, 30 doesn't go into 7, so there should be nothing above the 7. You really have to keep your numbers and stuff straight. You don't have to put an X there, but don't put a number above that. And then you ask yourself, how many times will 30 go into 75? And believe it or not, okay, with multiples of 10, you're going to get the same thing as how many times 3 goes into 7. If you look at just the two first digits, that's going to that's gonna tell you how many times that multiple of 10 is going to go in there. So yes, it is 2, okay, but you have to remember, you multiply the 2 times the 30 now, not just the 3. And everything looks alike, except there's just zeros that get tacked on the end. And you run out of things. There's nothing to bring down here, so you're done with the problem. This is just your remainder. Okay, and it's, and we're, don't make them fractions unless they tell you, because I think we have done some stuff with fractions, but don't do that. And again, remember, okay, you can have a remainder of 15. Why? You can have a big remainder because, Madison? Um, right. As long as your remainder is less than this, it, it's fine. You could have a 29 there. You couldn't have a 30, because if you get a remainder of 30, it'll go into it another time. Okay. So when you get bigger divisors, you can always have bigger, you'll get bigger remainders too. But it can't be bigger than the divisor. So that's kind of your check there. And then you're done with this problem. It's just 2 remainder 15. Now let's look at another one here. Uh, what about 60 into 725? If you're doing 60 into 725, does 60 go into 7. It does not. So please don't put a number above the 7. Nothing gets put there because it doesn't. Now, how many times does 60 go into 72? And again, the way to look at it, and it's, you know, even when we start getting to harder division problems, you know, take off those ending digits and, and that gives you a good indication. How many times will 6 go into 7? It's very close to the same thing as how many times 60 will go into 72. Alex says, just once, you multiply you subtract. Okay, now it's getting a little tougher because now we got to say how many times will 60 go into 125? But again, here's what you do. Lock off the ending digits and change instead of 60 into 125, think how many times will 6 go into 12 because that will be the number there, which is... Say we bond here. Twice. Did you say twice? Did you get it? And then what is 2 times 60? If you don't know, but you should be able to do this in your head, 2 times 0 is 0, and then 2 times 6 is 12. I subtract. Okay, nothing's left to bring down. I forgot my arrow. Okay, 
Okay, so this is fine. I can have a remainder of five, and that is what I get up there. Okay. Division by multiples of ten is a very, very simple thing. What about a dollar thing? What if it's 20 into, uh, what do we have here? $3.20. What about this? Anybody know what the first thing I should do here? There's a little helpful hint for you here. Alex? Bring your decimal up. Exactly. Wherever the decimal is right here, you're just going to shoot it and put it right above where it is right there. Okay. And then we'll do the same thing. 20 doesn't go into 3. So in this case, you can put a 0 there just because you can put zeros in front of decimals. How many times does 20 go into 32? And if you knock off the front, how so many times does 2 go into 3? Caitlin Stritzel. Once. One time. 1 times 20 is 20. Subtract. Bring down. How many times will 20 go into 120? Brandon. Um, 6. 6 times because 2 goes into 12 6 times. Now please make sure, kids, if they give you a money problem, if they give you a money problem and you get a remainder, you probably get it wrong. Because they, they won't, you know, we don't mix money and remainders. So the book probably won't give you something that has money and you, you can't get a remainder five in the center. <coughs> one last one for you to try. Well, actually, I don't know, let's just do it. Uh, here, well, let's make it a story problem. <coughs> Bob arranged 454 chairs uh, in rows that contained 30 chairs. In rows of 30 chairs. How many complete rows? How many complete rows will we have? Or full rows? And how many? Let's suppose how many will he have in the last row? So anytime you're doing groups of things, trying to break things into groups, that's division. So obviously I'm going to divide one into what? Yes, whoever said 30 into 454, you were right. Okay. 30, I'm sorry, put a few here. 30. Okay, 30 doesn't go into four. Nothing above the 4. How many times is 30 going to 45? Again, think of how many times 3 will go into 4, which would be what, Caleb? How many times is 30 going to 45? Once. Once. I do my multiplication. I get 30. I do my subtraction. I get 15. I do my bringing down. I get 154. How many times will 30 go into 154? Grace Watson, what do you think? How many times will 30 go into 154? And then look at, knock off the ends. How many times will 3 go into 15? Five times. I multiply 30 times 5, it's 150. And I'm left with nothing to bring down in the remainder of 4. That doesn't answer my question yet. How many complete rows? How many full rows will there be? 15, and then in the last row, because he had to use all the chairs, how many chairs were left over? Four. So that last row was just four. Well, people like that last row, just four. Some people.